What is happening? Everybody, Trey here, and today at Reactions to the Classics, we have another awesome top 10 list coming to you today. It's going to be the top 10 night songs, courtesy of our longtime friend and patron of the channel, Becca. Becca, you've uh, been supporting the channel for a while and uh, always appreciate you and uh, the unique and eclectic mix of tunes that you bring, and I know today's going to be no different. Um, Becca noted on this, just to be clear, this list is not necessarily in order by greatness of song, but rather how well it encapsulates the feeling, the vibe, the experience of the night. Also, if a song just seems better played at night, get to, get you in the mood uh, for, for those nighttime jams right here, man. So I'm looking forward to this. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome uh, to Reactions to the Classics. Hope you enjoy your time here, man. You like the video, you know the drill, man. It helps us out if you leave a thumbs up and hit that big red subscribe button. We are on our way to 15K, man. Much appreciated to y'all and all the patrons like Becca who help keep the channel running. Uh, gonna have the lyrics pulled up to all of these tunes and uh, due to copyright, the music will not be in this video. There will be a link to Vimeo in the description where you can see the full video with the music. I think all the housekeeping's out of the way now, y'all. Let's get into this list. Number 10 here, we're gonna start with Reminiscing by Little River Band off their record Sleeper Catcher in 19. 78. If you don't know uh, much about Little River Band like me, well, uh, well, we'll give you a little primer here before we go into the tune. From Australia, a soft rock music group, the song was written by the band's guitarist uh, Graham Goble and sung by their lead cedar, uh, singer Glenn uh, Shorrock. Hopefully I'm not butchering those names too much. Uh, it's the band's greatest success in the U.S., peaking at number three. Uh, it won the Australian Record of the Year in 1978. It was given a BMI 5 Million Air Award for 5 million plays on U.S. radio, the highest achievement ever for any Australian popular song. According to Albert Goldman's biography, the great John Lennon named this track as one of his favorite tunes. Uh, May Peng, uh, his, uh, you know, kind of on again, off again, the relationship during uh, his, uh, his wild summer, said, oddly, with all the fantastic music he wrote, our song was reminiscing by the Little River Band. And in a 2005, uh, Graham Goble, the band's guitarist, spoke of his inspiration for the track, saying, I loved watching old black and white movies, and I always loved the music of Glenn Miller and Cole Porter, that whole era of writing, and it was my attempt to write a song to depict the romantic era. It came out very quickly. I wrote it in about half an hour. Even though a lot of people think it sounds complicated on the guitar, it's very simple to play. It actually nearly never got recorded. When the time came to record it, the keyboard player I wanted to use, Peter Jones, was out of town, so we cut the band track with a different keyboard player. It didn't work. A few days later, we tried it again with a different keyboard player. Again, it didn't work, and the band was losing interest in the song. Just before the album was finished, Peter Jones came into town. The band and I had an argument because I wanted to give Reminiscing a third chance. Peter played on it. We cut it, finished it, sent it to Capitol. They said they couldn't hear any singles on the album and didn't know what to release. Five weeks later, someone at Capitol's New York office said, you're all crazy. Reminiscing is a smash. They put it out and it caught fire. So uh, I always enjoy looking at the backstories of some of these tunes and how often do you read y'all about a, a song that um, almost didn't get pushed out as a single or got cut off an album that becomes a monster hit. Um, but anyways, y'all, that's what we got for number 10 here. Thank you again to Becca. Let's get our reminiscing on. This definitely felt like a nice late 70s, you know, soft rock, yacht rock, whatever you want to call it type of tune. And um, very mellow and a, a lot going on here underneath the surface. Obviously, we had uh, the, the cool trumpet solo in the outro. I, I enjoyed that. I, I thought that uh, uh, Graham's guitar work just uh, came in kind of, I, I was waiting for it just based off of um, what, uh, you know, what we were reading at the start. And it didn't disappoint, man. I, I thought that it came in in a, in a, a bit of an understated way, uh, but uh, still was able to, to impress it. He didn't, you know, try to 
uh, go, go wild with it, uh, so to speak, man. Um, and just the the subject matter of the song, just a, kind of a, a bit of a throwback in a way. Um, you know, we are introduced to them. Uh, speaking of the night theme, Friday night, it was late. I was walking you home. Um, he gets down to the gate. He was dreaming of the n- uh, night. Would it turn out right? Um, we kind of build up. He wants to spend the rest of his life with uh, her. We get the shout out to the Glenn Miller's band. Um, it was uh, better than before. We yelled and screamed for more. And then, you know, we, we get some of that nostalgia coming in um as they're they're dancing in the room to that that porter tune man um he says i promise you i'd never be alone and uh uh, then the last version knows the years have gone on each time we hear our favorite song the memories come along older times we're missing spending the hours reminiscing how often y'all do you hear a track that maybe uh was big when you were a kid or maybe when you were with uh, certain buddies or a relationship and it just uh, music is just so unique in that aspect it can take you right back to that time and place and um and much like in anything else like you see a picture it can maybe do the same thing but besides pictures and and then music, I can't think of anything that can really kind of transport your your feelings and uh, your memories just flooding back to a, a particular time and place. Um, so I thought they really nailed that down, and uh, I enjoyed it, man. Good way to start the list. And now we're going to switch gears a little bit, going to number nine with a little Judas Priest here from their uh, famous record British Deal in 1980. We got Living After Midnight. The song speaks to the hedonistic, rebellious spirit of the time, and as a band, they're... Uh, is, an, is among the band's most popular songs. The song title came about when Glenn Tipton awakened uh, lead singer Rob Halford with his loud guitar playing at 4 a.m. Uh, Halford uh, commented to Tipton that he was really living after midnight, and Tipton replied that Halford's comment was a great title for the song he was working on, and uh, it apparently has quite a uh, quite a nice solo in here. So let's get to this one, hidden that fade out for us. All right, living after midnight. What a just an anthemic song. I part, the, my favorite part was the the chorus. Living after midnight just feels like it was made uh, to be played loud and uh, and at night. So Becca, you're uh, you're staying true to your your list here. Um, and I mean it's it's quite a self explanatory song, man. They're going out, they're partying, they're getting loaded uh, loaded. The the joint is is flying high, man. Um, and uh, I, I like the. Uh, Tipton guitar solo. I wish it was actually a little longer, but that's just me nitpicking here, man. And um, yeah, I, I think that uh, just kind of had a party vibe to it, of course. Just a, a rocker that uh, kind of uh, gets you up and going. And um, man, I don't have too much more to add to that other than to say I uh, liked it. And I, th- I think it reflected that uh, that party night atmosphere quite well, uh, as does this next track. One of my uh, favorites of the era from the zombies uh we have time of the season coming in at becca's number eight we actually have a full uh, track by track review of odyssey and oracle the record that this uh, is taken from it was a single written by their keyboard player rod argent uh, released only at al cooper's urging he was the record executive at the time but uh, didn't have much success and after previous singles flopped they re-released it and it made its breakthrough in early 69 over a year after they split up that's a wild story you can check out the review for a little more uh, on this record and the zombies in general it reached three in the u.s one in Canada. Canada, but didn't chart uh, either time in the UK. It uh, extensively uses Colin response vocals, interweaved with the voice of lead singer Colin Blundstone and fast-paced psychedelic improvisational keyboards. So uh, let's dive into this one, man. An absolute iconic track. The fantastic time of the season. So much to love about this track. From the opening bass rip that comes in, that's iconic. And I, I really think it provides a, a solid foundation, especially towards uh, the end of the second half of the song, where uh, Argent was really able to go in on the organ and just breathe some life in, into the, the track, and uh, just so impressive. Definitely has that psychedelic nature as well with the, 
you know, especially at the start, so unique. And I mean, this song really does kind of ooze that sexiness about it, especially for the time that it was written. Um, I mean, even in the first verse, it's the time of the season when the love runs high in this time, give it to me easy and let me try with pleasured hands. I mean, a, a bit provocative for the time, man. A little, you know, maybe it seems tame now, but I, I think in 1968 when it was released and, you know, the, the stuff was getting banned uh, left and right just for kind of the most... Uh, uh, benign things uh, that's uh, notable there and again that, that call and response helps to get you it stuck in your head and um, just uh, just a, a cool nature kind of throughout the whole track I think it fits that uh, you know kind of sexy nighttime feel and uh, so yet again Becca absolutely uh, absolutely killing it love the instrumentation on this I, I think the vocals especially in the chorus it's the time of the season you know where uh, we kind of keep going up in a higher register there it's a uh, it's also great man as is this next track we have the eagles coming in here at uh, our number seven we have one of these nights from uh, the album of the same name from 1975 written by don henley and glenn fry became their second single to top the uh, billboard hot 100 after best of my love also helped propel the album to number one we got henley on lead vocal in the verses while uh, we have a uh, randy singing high harmony on the refrain song was influenced by r&b music and disco according to fry he was listening to spinners and al green records when he started writing the song he started the process by composing the music and then henley started with the lyrics fry said i just went over to the piano and i started playing this little minor descending progression and he comes over and goes one of these nights while they were recording the album in miami the band also shared a studio with the bgs and according to henley the four on the floor bass drum pattern is a nod to disco uh, in the liner notes of the very best of fry had this to say about the song we had don henley's voice which allowed us to go in a more soulful direction which made me exceedingly happy a lot of things came together on one of these nights our love of the studio the dramatic improvement in don's and my songwriting we made a quantum leap with one of these nights it was a breakthrough strong song it is my favorite eagles record if i had to pick one it wouldn't be hotel california it wouldn't be take it easy for me it would be one of these nights uh fry also said that the song is about putting things off we've all said oh, one of these nights i'm going to do something get that girl make that money uh, we all have our dreams a vision we hope will come true someday when that someday will come is up to each of us i just thought that uh uh, Fry had some words of wisdom there and uh, a unique backstory to this track. So uh, I know this song. It's a it, it's got that classic eagle sound. So let's get into it. I like these two, man. We're getting getting these outros on this track, man. Throwing it old school. Love a lovely track here. One of these nights, just like time of the season, kind of starting with that uh, that bass intro and uh, and. Uh, I mean, so much to highlight here that's enjoyable. I mean, the, the chorus with Randy hitting, hitting those high notes uh, just comes in beautifully. I think the mixing on this in particular is fantastic. The the layering of the vocals, um, each instrument just comes through uh, so so clear. The bass work um, is fantastic. You have that solo coming in by uh, Don Felder towards the end, which was uh, so impressive, man. Obviously, Glenn Fry killing it on the piano as well. A tune that uh, you know kind of is uh, you know just makes you turn turn back and uh, think think of what you could do one of these nights <laughs> in a way and, and yet it still has that kind of mellow feel about it um, so uh, a very versatile tune if you will and um, I, I I think that uh, just in um, one of my my favorite is uh, I've been searching for the daughter of the devil himself I've been searching for an angel in white I've been waiting for a woman who's a little of both and I can feel her but she's nowhere inside um, obviously the the subject matter man queuing in on finding that love um, but obviously as a Glenn noted it could uh, apply to kind of anything um, that uh, you've been putting off or that you kind of got your your eyes set on man so uh, let's all go take it one of these nights and uh, go go seize the day man uh, all, all I got to say on this man just I think everything works I, I think uh, the the musicianship is uh, just top notch and uh, just lovely vocal performances both by uh, by Randy hitting the high notes and um, by uh, by Henley in, in the verses man I thought the transitions were, were just great and uh, we're gonna keep the great tunes rocking as we go now to number six uh, from my favorite album uh, the self self-titled 
Uh, we have Moon Dance by uh, Van Morrison, my favorite uh, album by him, released in 1970. But this song, the title track, was not released as a single until November of 77, so seven and a half years later. Um, it is also the, one of the tunes that Van plays most frequently in concert, ranked uh, 226 on Rolling Stone's Top 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. was written and developed while Morrison was living in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He has noted of this track, quote, With Moondance, I wrote the melody first. I played it on soprano sax, and I knew I had a song, so I wrote uh, lyrics to go with the melody. That's the way I wrote that one. I don't really have any words to particularly describe the song. Sophisticated is probably the word I'm looking for. For me, Moondance is a sophisticated song. Frank Sinatra wouldn't be out of place singing that. Um, I, I own this. I own this record, man. It's a. It's an absolute classic. Uh, definitely like it more than Astral Weeks. I know some people love that record, but for me, Moon Dance all day. So let's get into this one. All right, Moon Dance, self-titled tune from Van Morrison here, and uh, yet again we start with a lovely instrumental section here, a, a bit jazz inspired, I think you could say, with the um, the bass and piano in particular going in. Um, very intricate music. Basically, probably the most impressive uh, instrumental that we've had on this list and I mean we've had some great ones but I think between the um, uh, the great bass line the uh, lovely piano the flutes that come in pepper in here and there as well as the saxophone with the uh, with bands um, kind of mature voice like it, it all it all works well and uh, this might be the most kind of nighttime tune that we have as well uh, just in the title and uh, really a band that does a great job setting that imagery up here of a uh, two lovers kind of meeting in the night uh describing the setting you know with the stars i can just kind of envision it with uh um i mean it, it's a, in a it's a, a cool october sky here you know he, he talks about the trees and everything that's surrounding them uh, really is able to um you know vividly kind of describe and put you in that place there and then uh, he really kind of gets into that vocals and the chorus can i just have one more moon dance with you my love can i just make some more romance with you my love so this is three songs in a row that have uh, been brimming with that uh, that love um, that loving nature and um, just uh, just kind of that passion between two people here so I don't know if Becca did that intentionally but it's kind of cool to see these uh, themes from uh, you know uh, so many uh, kind of different styles uh, just uh, be interwoven together man and um, I, I thought uh, uh, you know just uh, at the top notch Top-notch tune from start to finish, man. And again, I thought the outro, kind of bringing it back to um, kind of that jazz-inspired feel, worked well. And and uh, that jazzy instrumentation, I think, uh, always makes me think of the kind of nighttime too. Um, and so that that works all together with the lyrics, man. And we're gonna keep it actually here as we go to number five. We're gonna keep it with Moon Dance, and we're going into the Mystic, ladies and gentlemen. Another fantastic tune. If you haven't listened to Moon Dance, the record, man, what are you waiting for? Go, 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 check it out. This is also on Rolling Stone uh, 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. Morrison remarked on the song and how it's used to uh, homophones lent to alternative uh, meetings. He said, "Into the Mystic is another one like uh, Madam Joy and Brown Eyed Girl." Originally, I wrote it as Into the Misty, but later I thought it had something of an uh, ethereal feeling uh, to it, so I called it Into the Mystic. The song is kind of funny because when it came time to send the lyrics into WB Music, I couldn't figure out what to send them because really the song has two sets of lyrics. Um, all in all, I guess the song is just about being part of the universe, and according to a BBC survey, because of the song's cooling, soothing vibe, this is one of the most popular songs for surgeons to listen to while performing operations. How true that is, I don't know. If you're a surgeon, let us know if you uh, vibe to Into the Mystic whenever you're uh, about to, to, to cut somebody up, man. But uh, yet again, another really strong tune, one of my favorites off this record, so let's dive in. All right, into the mystic coming in at number five, and yet again, what what a what an intricate track instrumentally. Uh, I, we, yeah, I'm a broken record on this list, but the bass in particular just stood out to me, um, and uh, I, I think that you know you had your, your multiple saxophones in here, you had a band himself on that acoustic guitar. I think a little bit of tambourine, um, piano, just so much thrown into here. Um, but it, it all works and blends together so well on top of um, a band's uh, kind of a poetic lyrics, I guess you could say. Very, uh, it stays true to its name. It's, there's a bit of that uh, 
uh, mystical quality and, and intrigue to uh, the story that he's telling that I think you can kind of just interpret in whatever way that you want um, and, uh, you know, just kind of get you thinking, you know, even from the first verse, we were born before the wind, so also younger than the sun, so obviously kind of hearkening back to that uh, that prehistoric age, uh, that eternal feel, if you will, the way that he, again, ramps his, his voice up, man, uh, talking about when that foghorn blows and uh, uh, I want to hear it, I don't have to fear it, and just, uh, I think the music just crescendos to that perfect uh, perfect juncture there, and then we go into the chorus, man, I want to rock your gypsy soul, just like way back in the days of old, and, you know, we had a couple different instrumental breaks, uh, what a quick three and a half minutes, and just a uh, just one of Van's best tunes, one of my favorite tunes by him. Uh, can't can't say more than that, man. Just an, an absolute classic. And now we're going up to number four on this list. We're going to Overkill from Men at Work from the Cargo Record in 1983. They are an Australian pop rock band. Their second single was a top ten hit in many countries, including the United States. Uh, written by lead singer Colin Hay. I don't know much uh, Minute Work, so uh, this will be a, a nice first time reaction. Let's see what we got. All right, Minute Work bringing it with Overkill and uh, kind of taking a, a bit of a, a left turn from a lot of the subject matter we've had on this list, being you know kind of about love or partying or this or that. Here we get a, a bit more introspective as we come into the night, where uh, I know I know for me, man, that that can definitely uh, uh, happen. Um, your, your mind gets raised, and so that's why I resonated um, with uh, what Colin was was singing here, saying, "I can't get to sleep. I think about the implications of diving in too deep, and possibly the complications, especially at night. I worry over situations I know will be all right. Ain't that the the worst, man? When you you're laying down and you know you got stuff to do tomorrow, or this situation, or what happened at work, or with this person today, then your mind gets going and racing, and then uh, before you know it, uh, an hour." or in an hour and a half have passed and then you get to thinking man i gotta get to sleep because i know the morning is gonna come soon um it definitely had that nice um uh, early 80s slick um you know pop rock feel to it i thought uh, we had a, a, a groovy little solo in there um colin sounded really solid he reminded me of sting at different points in this and i like the way he uh he really got uh, passionate in that last verse i don't know much minute work man but uh it, it, it kind of has that uh, um you know throwback I, I do like that throwback 80s pop um you know kind of uh, veneer on on tunes man so i'm gonna have to go and uh and check that out man and uh again fit the fit the night theme very well and uh going from one group i don't know much of to another uh artist i don't think i've heard anything of we have self-control by laura uh brannigan coming in here from 1984 so gonna stick in that 80s period originally released by italian singer raf uh hopefully i'm uh pronouncing that right. Uh, it was originally written by uh, Juan Carlo Bigazi, uh, Steve Piccolo, and Raph. Uh, Brannigan's version peaked at number four on the U.S. Hot 100 chart and uh, was her lead single. It was a hit all over the world, number one single of the year in Germany and Switzerland. Uh, Brannigan's first major hit had also been co-written by uh, Bigazi. Uh, Gloria in 1982 was an English cover of a 1979 original Italian song. So uh, that's, uh, that's interesting as well. This track is gonna narrate the singer slip into the world of nightlife, the allure of which has her living only for the night and deeming herself to live among the creatures of the night. Ooh, let's go, man. All right, we got Laura Branigan coming in with self-control. What a vibe that was right there. Probably fit the uh, the night uh, feel so much just uh, since that uh, that was the main main uh, theme of the, the lyrics right here. Uh, and uh, again, just quite enjoyed that uh, that 80s vibe that we had here with the synths going in um, and uh, just uh, that that uh, that drum beat, the, the rhythm in particular, man, was uh, quite enthralling and if this this is one that i'm going to be putting i have a playlist just called vibes you know vibes this is a vibes tune right here if i've ever heard one man it's made you want to get up and kind of groove but also had some intrigue in the lyrics man these
these are not uh, these are not uh, basic lyrics by any uh, stretch of the imagination. As I kind of said at the start, you know, she really loves the allure of the night. But it's interesting. I wonder what y'all's take is on. Uh, she says, "You take myself. You take my self control. You got me living only for the night." I'm just gonna say that's probably a, obviously a lover or something along that uh, regard. But just to kind of expand on that story, I thought Laura did a great job and uh, uh, throughout the song because there are a lot of lyrics packed up in in here, man. Um, and especially kind of towards the end, you kind of get those backing. Oh, 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 you take myself, you take my self control. Um, very very catchy in that regard as well. So all in all, man, shout out to shout, shout out to Laura Brand again here. I don't think there's going to be another song on here that uh, is going to make you want to kind of get up and, and dance as much as this one is. And uh, definitely add that nighttime feel. Laura's like a lot of us, man. You know, just going uh, going day to day. Don't know what tomorrow brings. So let's live it up for the night. I, I can get behind that, man. Um, <laughs> so now we're to our final two, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to uh, a great group, if, uh, if there ever was one. Some, some good vibes may be coming in here with Summer Night City by ABBA. Uh, this was a single written by Benny and Bjorn as a tribute to their hometown of Stockholm. And it is actually the group's second non-album single. It was recorded during the sessions of the group's upcoming... Uh, I, I can't even pronounce the record, so I ain't even going to try. But it was eventually not included, in. Uh, but it was on reissues later on. Allegedly, mixing the single took at least a week, far more than it took to mix any other track in ABBA's recording history. They felt something was wrong with the recording, but couldn't put their finger on it. In the end, the song had an enormous amount of compression applied to it to give it more a driving sound. A reluctant ABBA decided to release it as a single despite their disappointment with the track in its current form, but it topped the charts in Ireland, Finland, Sweden, the group's last number one in their home country. It also reached the top five in the UK, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and many other countries. I don't think I know this one, but uh, only one way to find out. Let's get it. Number two. Right. Abba bringing the heat with Summer Night City. Uh, such a unique song. I, I've only listened to a, a couple of um, Abba's albums, but this is just so so much different than anything I've ever uh, heard from them, man. And I, I think this is an, an epic tune. It's a, a very busy tune, but um, I... I, I you know, I, I can see where somebody could interpret it as being a bit too busy, and, and maybe that's why the band itself didn't really enjoy it. But I, uh, I think it really kind of worked together, and I thought it was pretty tight that we had Bjorn, um, uh, Benny, Frida, and uh, Agatha all uh, contributing to the vocals, especially in that hook, that uh, summer night city, very, uh, very sultry. And um, as I sit here recording this in mid-May, man, this is going to be going on my summer playlist as we get gearing up for that. It um, again, I think, was aided by the bass work, the the synthesizer, um, you know, uh, the very busy track instrumentally as well. Uh, I can see why this took so long to produce. There's just so much going on in here, and yet I feel it works. Uh, I, I think it's the perfect length at three and a half minutes, um, and uh, again, just kind of building that uh, that imagery of the the action in the night the love in the night um I, I thought that uh, was pretty tight you, she in the chorus when the night comes with the action I just know it's time to go can't resist the strange attraction from that giant dying no mo lots to take and lots to give time to breathe and time to live that's, that's what I that spirit of a uh, let's go out there man let's live our life have fun that that's kind of what I was getting uh, a little bit in this tune man um and and uh, the, just uh, ending that out kind of with the summer night city, walking in the moonlight, love making in the park. You know it's about to go down and be a good time right there, man. So uh, a, a worthy track there coming in. And now, drum roll, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for number one on the night songs list. What do we got? We've had this man featured already on the list, but we're going solo here. Mr. Glenn Fry. You Belong to the City uh, from the Miami Vice soundtrack in 1985. Written by Glenn and Jack Tempchin. It was written specifically for the TV show. It peaked at number two in the U.S. behind Starship's We Built This City. All instruments were performed by the man himself, sans the uh, drum track and the saxophone part. So I'm not familiar with this song. Our longest song on this list 
let's uh, get into it. And then at the end, man, I'll give my favorite tracks on this uh, fantastic list that Becca has brought us. All right, Glenn Fry, you belong to the city, topping off this list. And uh, just what, what a track that encapsulates the era of uh, that mid 80s feel. And I can only imagine, I've never seen the show, but I can only imagine uh, that it fits it perfectly as well. I think that synthesizer, which uh, we've had pop up now on a, um, you know, on a decent amount of tracks in this top half of the list, uh, it 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 is. Can I say it's a nighttime instrument? Uh, it it kind of has that nighttime quality to it, and uh, uh, this really reminded me because we started with that saxophone solo, kind of of uh, Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty. Um, if you uh, know that uh, tune, another really famous song. Um, and uh, I, I thought Glenn delivered a very passionate vocal performance here. Um, and I, I think they did a good job. I mean, it was the longest song on the list, but I, I think it needed to be, man. They let the song breathe, so to speak, and uh, just kind of let you ride out uh, on that uh, on that synthesizer and, and uh, kind of the interplay with that. And the saxophone uh, really just uh, played well together. That drum beat going in as, as well, just being the, the constant foundation of the track. And I mean, the, the lyrics itself again kind of paint that picture i could close my eyes imagine i was on the the, the beach of miami with uh, with the, the the moon over me and um i mean he knows the sun goes down the night rolls in you can feel it starting all over again then you know you get the music going man you're you're tired of your situation so uh it's time to for you to to go through and uh, the traffic might be roaring the sirens are screaming you look at the faces it's just like a dream nobody knows uh, where you're going nobody cares where you've been uh, I, I quite enjoyed that man in the course uh, again kind of letting uh, letting us into that city of uh, Miami um, and uh, all in all man uh, a, a really solid tune that I think encapsulates the uh, the the heart of the list so to speak man so now y'all uh, that's gonna take me to my favorite tracks on this list this is a tough one because I enjoyed so many. Um, so I'm just going to be uh, be basic here and uh, just in no particular order. I got to go time of the season. Um, just a, a bona fide 60s classic, one of my favorite of the eras. I got to show love to one of these nights by Eagles. I, I thought that uh, just uh, the vocal performances, the layering, the uh, um, the instrumentation in there was all just so elite. Got to throw some love to Man the Man with Into the Mystic, one of my favorites by him. Um, Self Control by Laura Branigan as well, and uh, Summer Night City um, by ABBA. Those would be mine. I know I uh, littered off half the list right there, but uh, I, there wasn't a song on here that I disliked. And you know me, man. I I'll, I'll let you know if I'm not not digging a, a, a tune or anything. But I I think that uh, Becca, you did a fantastic job on this list. And uh, it, it really did uh, kind of harken, harken to that nighttime feel, if you will. So all in all, y'all, let me know down below what your favorites were from this list. Be sure to give Becca some love. And uh, be sure to let me and uh, the rest of us know any other nighttime tunes that uh, you think uh, would uh, make the list as well. And until next time, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Happy listening. And I will see you.